Okay, so I think I've showed you, shown you the basics of the mock client. I want to show you how easy it is to make a phone call, just a standard out to the PSTN phone call. So I'm going to call my desk phone, which I assign a pretty generic phone number. Um, you'll see if I type in a three-digit extension, I've actually got a rule set to automatically make that an E164 formatted number, and you can see it shows up here below. So if I go ahead and click that, click the call, it'll actually reach out to my Polycom phone. But I'm not going to keep that phone phone call active, so I'm going to go ahead and close it. It's that simple to make a phone call. And it's just as simple to receive a phone call if I call from that, that same phone inbound to this device, to the mock client. You'll see the calls coming in. Shows our main phone number, incoming call. I can choose to redirect it straight to voicemail, or I can set to not dis do not disturb. Please leave a message for engage. So it actually, because I didn't answer it, it actually went straight to voicemail. Now, because we have the mock client integrated with Microsoft Exchange, you can see this pop-up we just got that I missed a call from my work phone. We also got an indication right here on this folder with a little red bang. It says, view missed notification. So I click on that. It says, I missed a conversation. So if I click that as well, it'll bring Exchange, or excuse me, Outlook up, and it shows me the missed call. Now I'm going to do the same thing and actually leave a voicemail so that you can see the voicemail is uh, sent straight to uh, Exchange via unified uh, messaging. So I'm placing the call again, sending it to voicemail. Please leave a message for Engage Einstein. After the tone, please record your message. When you finish recording, hang up or press the pound key for more options. Uh, this is a test message. Thank you. All right, and momentarily we'll get a pop-up indicating that a voicemail was, was received. So there's the message incoming from Outlook. And then this is what the indicator looks like when a voicemail has been received. So if I click that, click on the voicemail message, I can open that up, and I can listen to the voicemail if I choose to. Yeah, but I'm not going to do right, that right now because you wouldn't be able to hear it. And that's just to give you an idea of how well Microsoft OCS integrates with Exchange, uh, how, how handy it is and how useful it is and how, just how easy it is, actually. Now, we also have the capability to use live meeting with Microsoft Communicator. We can either start a live meeting session by scheduling it through the Outlook client. We can do a meet now, which is an on-the-fly live meeting. We can schedule a live meeting. We can schedule a conference. This is all via a add-in that's uh, installed into Outlook that works with OCS and live meeting, as live meeting is part of the Office Communication Server 2007 R2. Actually, I think I got a little bit ahead of myself. Let me go back to the basic client, because I wanted to show how, how easy it is to do a, an IM in which you can add another user to the session, either by inviting the user through your contacts, or, of course, my favorite way is a simple way, and that's just to drag someone in from your list straight into the conversation, and that creates an IM conference. Let's see if Jason is able to join us. All 
All right, so he's there. Now the same thing applies here when you have multiple users uh, in a conference situation. If I want to escalate this to a voice call, I can just click on the join a conference call using communicator here, which is the same one we saw when it was just two-way, and that creates a voice uh, conference call. And then the same thing would apply also to escalate that to a video call. If I click the video icon, then those who wanted to join using video could. Now, the purpose of not doing the call for the demo is that you wouldn't be able to hear the other users. So it's, it would be difficult to demonstrate that here in a live meeting session. So I'll go ahead and close that out. Uh, Robert, are you still with me? Yes, sir. Okay. Uh, do you think I've missed anything as far as the basics of Office Communicator? No, you covered the um, the routing for the moving from one phone to the other. Uh, did you go over the um, sharing out desktops and, and things like that? Yeah, I don't think I showed sharing desktops with Communicator. That's another feature that we use quite a bit. And being able to go from having a, an, instant, an instant message session to that turns into a conference instant message session, then we can turn into a conference call and then also share it at a desktop if needed. Right, okay. So let me go ahead and do that. If, if you get a clean desktop, then maybe I'll get you to share, or I'll just share mine since it's clean. And that way that really accelerates the collaboration on working on an issue or um, working on a, a document or, or a project together. Okay, so real quick, I've shown you escalating to a communicator call to a video session but I did forget to show you sharing the desktop to the, the mock client. I showed you that through CWA, but not through the mock client. It's even easier with, with the uh, mock client. So we'll start this instant message session. And either one of us in the session can, can start sharing a desktop. Either Robert could start or I could start. We can share the desktop. We could share the main monitor or the second monitor. It just depends on what we want to show. So I'll just share the main monitor. Actually, I'm going to end that. Robert, if you will share one of yours, just so we can see that we're looking at a different screen. Uh, sure. Can you see that, Scott? No, I didn't. I didn't get an invite yet. There you are. Wrong. You, you probably chose the Scott Barr account, didn't you? <laughs> I actually shared it over Jason. <laughs> oh, <laughs> there we go. All right, good. So you can see Robert's screen is is here on on my screen. <clears throat> And he could give control if he wanted to so that I could actually control the screen. I could maximize it to make it larger, resize it. We could continue the IM session, or we could go ahead and add audio to the session or video if we wanted to. Generally speaking, when we do remote desktop sessions, uh, it's pretty much left at IM or audio, audio being the quickest way to collaborate. And as you can see, it was very simple to set up the session uh, quite fast as well. And we could invite others. Um, like I said earlier, we can invite by contact, by email, 
or we can just drag another user from our contact list straight into the conversation and they could join and they could also be involved in the remote desktop sharing session.